don't think that I dressed up like this for you because I didn't. It's my birthday tomorrow, September 10th. Don't mess it up. Not a day later. Absolutely not a day later. Tomorrow's my birthday and there is nothing more that I wanted to do than to go to CVS and print out full-size pictures of Trisha Paytas crying, which then I had to tell the employee at CVS, oh, it's for a school project. And she was like, I literally don't care. She pulled it out of the box and she was like, this is the one, right? Like, this is your order. And I was like, you really don't have to pull it out. I believe it. And she's like, no, I just want to make sure that you have the right one. So she's like slowly pulling out each one and they just keep getting worse. I might just keep this honestly on my wall. I usually have beautiful decor up here, but I think that this is more beautiful. This video is totally inspired by Mike's Mike. I've gotten compared to him in the past and there's nothing more higher form of a compliment for me. That feeds my ego severely. I also want to give a big thank you to Curology for sponsoring today's video. If you guys have kept up with me the last few months, then you know that I've kind of struggled with my skin recently. Baby girl has fungal acne. It's me, I'm baby girl. I was kind of trying to be my own dermatologist and figure out what my skin needs. And in reality, I don't know what's best for my skin. I'm not a dermatology provider. That's why I love Curology because I can message my dermatology provider online and get a timely response being like, hey, I think that this is best for your skin. And then I get it sent in the mail right to my door. I have been using this for a few weeks now and I have gotten so many compliments that my skin has been looking so much better and happier and I agree and I feel great. And this bottle is my custom formula that is made for me. So if you order Curology, you can get a Curology formula that is made for you. And I love how customizable this is because I am a changing person. I have changing skin. Skin. my skin is not always going to want the same thing forever or have the same needs forever and it'll just continue to be customized as my skin evolves at night all i need is literally one pump there's just something about looking like a texas roadhouse roll it just does something to me additionally with curology you can also get the acne body wash with two percent salicylic acid i love this body wash i always have bumps on the back of my elbows and the back of my thighs use this and suddenly I don't know where they are. Start your Curology journey today using my link. It's also gonna be linked down in the description. Subscription required, subject to consultation. Thank you, Curology. This video is me, a chronically online person, explaining to you the rise and the downfall of frenemies, even though it literally ended two years ago. One of my special interests is frenemies, okay? Fuck it. I love frenemies. I was a secret fan while it was happening because it was kind of controversial and problematic to like it at the time, and if you said that you liked it. Everyone was like, why are you watching the worst two people online on the internet? But like, what was there better to do in 2020? Okay, I'm a Frenemies fan, sorry. Some people do remember where they were on 9-11, okay? But some of us remember where we were on June 8th, 2021. Mainly because I was two years old on 9-11, so I quite literally cannot remember it because I was not conscious. I know that's like really hard to believe because I seem like someone who is just so smart and intelligent and that I would be conscious straight out of the canal. June 8th is a very important date that is near and dear to my heart. And I know many of you also watching, a day of remembrance, a day of sadness, a day of mourning, a day of uncertainty as to where the world was going to go next. I was at the vet with my cat because she was having explosive diarrhea because a man came over to fix the dishwasher and that was her first experience with a man ever. Everyone just starts blowing up my phone telling me frenemies is over. Like, what do you mean frenemies is over? What do you, what do you mean frenemies is over? But no, frenemies was really over. That was the day that frenemies ended, over two years ago now. I've been a changed woman ever since. The sun doesn't shine as bright. Colors, they look duller to me. I have no energy or zest for life anymore. Food doesn't taste the same. Flowers lost their beautiful smell they once had. I forgot to mention, I also have long COVID. Anyway, it's really tough being the only person in your friend group who has seen all 39 episodes of Frenemies, okay? No one likes you when you're the Frenemies fan in the group. No one gets inside jokes. Tuesdays feel the same for everyone else except you. And most importantly, no one understands when I go, mm, at the end of a sentence, mm. Anyway, I love you all so much in the most non-parasocial way ever. And I want you all to have the same obsessions and ideologies that I do. Some may call it occult indoctrination. I call it a chronically online person explains to you the lore of frenemies. Subscribe to my channel to stay in the cult. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna be introducing different people on the wall. So if you're a visual learner like I am, you'll be able to keep up. Frenemies, the podcast consists of Ethan Klein and Trisha Paytas. But it's important for you to understand who these people are, first of all. Who is Ethan Klein? Big chance, if you're a hot and sexy girl, you probably don't know 
who Ethan Klein is before Frenemies. I'm not saying that you're not hot and sexy if you did know who Ethan Klein was. I'm just saying that there is a huge chance that there is a large population of really hot girls who had no idea who Ethan Klein was, but did know who Trisha Paytas was, okay? This is Ethan Klein and this is Ela Klein, they're the creators of the H3 podcast. Originally it was called H3H3 Productions, which was a YouTube channel. They did skits, funny videos. They had this whole vape nation thing that was like really, really popular. And then they transformed it a few years ago into the H3 podcast. The H and the three, it's called H3 because Ela and the three is Ethan, E for Ethan, three, E three, three thin. On their podcast, they were known for having people like Post Malone, Joji. Ela and Ethan met at the Holocaust Museum in Israel. Ethan was on a birthright trip and Ela lived in Israel and was born and raised in Israel. And she was in the Israeli military because it's a requirement for everyone to serve in it. They got married in 2012. And at the time of when Frenemies started, they had one son named Theodore. Some important things to know about Ethan. He has had quite a history on YouTube, which is considered controversial and very offensive, honestly. Since then, Ethan has apologized for a lot of the things that he has done, but that does not mean that he has not hurt people since then as well, because he definitely has. It's also important to note that he is Jewish and has Tourette's. And I know that seems random, but it's it's important to the entire story of understanding frenemies. And I'm so serious when I tell you that on his Wikipedia page, that's exactly how it's listed is Jewish and has Tourette's. Nonetheless, a very controversial figure. Some people don't even wanna be on the H3 podcast because they know that they might be looked down upon because of it. In 2023, I would say that his show and his persona has definitely changed online. And I would say, I wouldn't use the word family friendly, but they're definitely more conscious of what they put out on the internet. They even have a button to delete the last 20 seconds of audio that is on air since their shows are live in case he said something offensive or doesn't want on the air. Over in 2020, he also got himself in a lot of trouble. Although he himself is Jewish, he said some pretty, pretty bad things about Ben Shapiro that I can't say in this video or else. I will be banned. <laughs> so that got him and his channel banned off of YouTube for a whole week. Ela Klein, however, works a bit more now on their clothing brand, Teddy Fresh. So while she is on the shows on Fridays and occasionally some other times, she is not the sole host of the H3 podcast. Who the hell is Trisha Paytas? Said no one ever. She's a YouTuber that I found when I was a child as Blonde Sundal for MJ. If you wanna know how much unlimited access I had to the internet, how little of parental control I had, I knew who Trisha Paytas was as a kid. Where is the new world order? So she's known for her trolling videos, for her mukbangs. She's been on various TV shows such as My Strange Addiction, America's Got Talent, The Ellen Show. She's basically kind of known as a troll who makes videos for attention, knows that they will get views. In this particular photo right here, she was crying because she found out that her boyfriend was in fact gay. It is speculated that this was all just a publicity stunt. Does Trisha Paytas always admit to her trolling? No, because then that wouldn't really be trolling. So Trisha Paytas is pretty open about her substance abuse issues in the past, her mental health issues, and how these things have contributed to her making distasteful videos, like coming out and identifying as a chicken nugget, or coming out and identifying as black. Trisha Paytas is known to be tied with other YouTubers. She was very, very close friends with Shane Dawson at the start of filming Frenemies, also friends with Jeffree Star, and also had major beef with Gabby Hanna. Additionally, she was kind of part of the vlog squad a few years back because she dated Jason Nash of the vlog squad. I just wanna make this very well known that even though I am doing a video about Frenemies and I'm a fan of the comedic side of the podcast and I know too much about it, that does not mean that I condone anything that any of these people do. They both have faults and mistakes and have hurt many, many, many different communities. They are 100% problematic and I will never ever deny that. Do I think in 2023 they have worked on some of the issues that they have in order to become better people. Personally, I feel like they have done some of the work. I think there's still a long way to go. How did Ethan and Trisha meet? October 26, 2019, Trisha Paytas came on the H3 podcast. She admits she hated Ethan Klein. 
with a burning passion and thought that he was a horrible person, that he is worse for women than Trump and saw him as a troll. She also believed that Ethan was slut shaming her and was very vile towards her because of a video that he made called Instagram versus reality, which he made on the H3 Productions channel. Essentially, it's this whole sexist video of him showing photos of women, how they look on Instagram versus candid photos of them saying that, wow, they look so beautiful here, but so ugly here. How is that even possible? Why do you, why are you even a model if you're gonna modify your looks that much? It's like from beauty queen to WWF wrestler in two seconds. You cannot Photoshop your heart and soul. Remember that. This girl tried to use a face filter on Instagram and her phone blew up. Here's another one of her. Refers to Trisha Paytas as a corpse and Tana Mojo, who is not on this board, as a Twinkie. So Trisha Paytas came onto the podcast to kind of confront Ethan and be like, you are such an asshole for doing that. She also admits to thinking that Ethan and Ela are Hasidic Jewish people and that she wants to find a Jewish man to marry so badly, but none of them want to marry her unless she converts. People think I fetishize Jewish people because I love Jewish men. Yeah, I but love I don't, you men. shouldn't say I obsess. Now, Trisha is pretty open about her Christian beliefs on her channel. Uh, she even has a song called, I Love You, Jesus. That's my superstar. I love you, Jesus. You might be asking yourself, why am I talking so much about Judaism? It's a huge part of Frenemies. But Trisha's comments about Judaism are also very, very prevalent on her channel for many years now. Prior to Trisha being on the first H3 podcast episode with them together, Trisha Paytas made a video where she talks about that she feels like a trans man. Trisha at the time was going by he, him pronouns, and many people were supportive of Trisha. However, many were very offended, feeling like she was mocking the trans community. Since then, Trisha has come out and said that she uses she, they pronouns. And she has admitted on her new podcast episode in August 2023 with Dr. Drew, okay? Some people like to compare him to like the Dr. Phil of YouTube. Um, However, it does seem like he is a legitimate doctor. Trisha and Dr. Drew sat down August 2023, and Trisha has talked about how she did not mean to hurt the trans community, but instead was truly going through gender identity issues. Her and Dr. Drew talked about how borderline personality disorder, which she is diagnosed with, has led her to feeling like she doesn't have a stable sense of self and struggles with feeling like she has no personality and identity of her own. It's also important to note that within this podcast episode, Ethan, Ela's also on there, okay? But Ela's not as confrontational as Ethan is, okay? Ethan is confronting Trisha and is telling her, listen, it's kind of messed up for you to be making these videos that are so controversial because you know that they'll get views. So you're just making so much money off of these and that's why you're doing it. It's a cash grab. Trisha claims that she has made no money off of any of these videos and that her whole channel is demonetized. So she has not made a single cent. Ethan then asks her to pull up the YouTube Studio app which she does, turns out she has made $8,000 off of that video at the time. Open your analytics time. and show I me that I don't have video. my computer. I literally don't have my computer. You have it on your phone. No, I don't. Yes, I'm you not do. Signed Every in. YouTuber has it on their phone. I, I, I swear. <laughs> she made $8,000 from that video. Wait, you have to cut that because YouTube will literally no, take away my monetization. You can't say how much you make. It. Trisha denies it, says that that can't be real, that can't be true. Ask Ethan to cut that out of the episode. Which furthers people's beliefs that Trisha said these hurtful things and was trolling in order to make money. Within the same episode, even though I've told you everything that I've told you so far, Trisha Paytas calls Ethan Klein a 10, all right? In front of his wife, Ela Klein. Well, no, I think they're the worst human. Yeah, but uh, on a, a scale of attraction. 10. <laughs> no, you don't. Thousand percent. You're 100% my type. I can't say it in front of you. I know you're my type, but... I can't say ugh. <laughs> Trisha says that she would go after Ethan if him and Ela had divorced. If Ela took your advice and moved on, would you make a move on me? Yes. Oh, God. So is Ela. that what you were trying to do the whole time? <laughs> However, she still thinks that he is the worst person alive, but he is a 10 and is attractive, and I quote, his face, his body, and his voice are what is most attractive about him. The second appearance on the H3 podcast. A few months later, February 22nd, 2020, right before the pandemic, Trisha Paytas is a guest again on the H3 podcast, announcing that they are going to be doing an H3 Bachelorette because Ethan has already done an H3 Bachelorette with his crew. This is his crew, okay? All right, that's his crew. He has done that already with a certain man named Ian, which they did the H3 Bachelorette in order for him to find a girlfriend, which through the Bachelorette, he has found a girlfriend named Sam. So he's like, oh my God, this was so successful. I want to do it again. Let's do it this time with Trisha Paytas. 
How funny would that be? So essentially H3 would organize for fans to send in videos as kind of like an audition to take Trisha out on a date. Things did not go as planned. Why would that? Instead of finding any interest in any of the contestants that submitted for the H3 Bachelorette, she instead finds interest in Moses Hackman, which is Ela Klein's brother. Brother. Siblings. I know this is really hard to believe that this isn't Jesus Christ himself, but he is Ela Klein's brother, who also happened to work on the H3 podcast. Over the course of the pandemic, Trisha Paytas and Moses Hackman are posting photos together, calling themselves family, clearly quarantining together. The intentions? Very unclear for Ethan and Ela, and they were suspicious. Frenemy starts September 15th, 2020. I don't know if I should be celebrating or mourning. No, I'm gonna be mourning. I'm gonna be dressed in all black, kind of like I am now. And yeah, no one talked to me and no one expect anything from me. Next Friday, I will be mourning. However, it is important to understand something about the Frenemies podcast. It is run under the H3 podcast umbrella. It is never its own separate entity, okay? Meaning that it is filmed in Ethan's studio, which at the time had to be run inside of their basement because of COVID. And it's run by Ethan's crew and employees who are producing it, writing it, editing it, posting it, everything all of the above. And when Frenemies is uploaded as a podcast, it is uploaded under the H3 podcast name. So when it goes up on Spotify, you would have to look up H3. Although it would have a different thumbnail, it is still run under the H3 podcast. Same thing with the YouTube channel. It does not have its own separate YouTube channel. It is run under the H3 podcast. Huge reason for this is because Ethan and Ela already had the resources for this podcast, okay? Also, Ethan was pretty unsure how long this would last with Trisha. They already had a built-in audience. It makes the most sense to put it under the H3 umbrella. And it worked. It was really successful that way. But that's extremely important to note because it was always under the H3 umbrella and it was not under Trisha's umbrella. The second episode of Frenemies is literally titled Trisha's Obsession with Jewish People. Main conversations early on in the podcast are literally about Trisha's undeniable obsession with the Jewish culture and religion. Hey, I'm like promoting this like culture. Yeah, but you're kind of like, uh, this is kind of like cultural appropriation, isn't it? Appreciation. Right, okay. The main conversations of the podcast also revolve talking about their weight, drug use, body counts, awkward sex conversations, Trisha's OnlyFans content, and also being obsessed and in love with Ela's brother, Moses Hackman. Just fetishize him. I always ask him that too. I'm like, I wonder if I just like like the idea of you. You say like, that to him? Yeah, like he's like, I don't know if it's like, he's just different and new and like a toy. So I'm That's like, well, this what is it fun. Is. Which might I add, during the taping of the show, the crew's all there, they're filming it all, okay? Ela, she's not there. Ethan's obviously there. Trisha's there. But Moses is always behind the scenes and behind the camera. Ethan begins to question Trisha a lot and begins prying on the podcast. Why are you so obsessed with Jewish people? Why are you making Jewish content online, especially TikTok, which she referred to as Jew talk? She says, rating my Jew lunch. Uh-huh. Do you not see what's the problem with that? I couldn't fit ish in there. But Jew is like a derogative. No. My Jew lunch. I think it's the way if you say it. I was writing like, oh, my Jew lunch. Despite Trisha Paytas in no way, shape or form being Jewish. This is also the episode where the whole thing where she goes, mm, got born. A joke, but you wanted to get it I would and get that cash grab. Who the fuck's gonna pay me to be on OnlyFans? A lot of people. Do you watch? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, yeah. I'm just feeling that's important to know. And within the second episode, a lot of anti-Semitic comments right off the bat. The third episode, within 20 seconds, they are already joking right off the bat about ending the show. It's gonna end. Because Trisha was annoyed with Ethan for texting her too much the night before they were going to film an episode because he was asking her if she has any ideas for the episode. This is just foreshadowing, okay? Trisha in this episode specifically says, we are not friends. She also says in this episode, Moses's family doesn't like me. No one likes me. Trisha Paytas at this time was not invited yet to Rosh Hashanah at Ethan Klein's house where Ela was going to be and Moses because their families would also be there. And 
Moses did not know if he wanted to bring Trisha just yet. Within the same episode, Trisha Paytas asked Ethan Klein if they can shower together for OnlyFans. Trisha also expressed that she doesn't like that Ethan wears Ela's clothing brand, Teddy Fresh, on the podcast so much because she could not advertise her OnlyFans in the description because YouTube quite literally does not allow that. But she was upset that he was wearing their clothing brand so much. The fourth episode. <laughs> October started, which means it's the Halloween month, meaning that Ethan and Trisha dress up every single week as different characters. Ethan decides to dress up as James Charles. In this episode, the most beautiful, glorious quote ever that is done because the crew and Trisha and Ethan are playing trivia, where Trisha then goes, the thinnest layer of the earth. The earth has four layers, the thickest of which is the mantle. What's the thinnest layer of the earth called? The foreskin. The thinnest layer of the earth. The thinnest layer of the earth. And someone on crew says, that is correct. And Trisha goes, oh, thank you. I got a point. Correct. Oh, thank you. I got a point. Sorry. No, wait, what? This is the first episode that truly rocked the boat on Frenemies. Now, there is a difference between what they do on the H3 podcast, which sometimes, which a lot of the times is arguing. And there is a difference between that and fighting, which is where like... <sighs> It feels like mom and dad are fighting, okay? Now for me personally, mom and dad fighting meant that I had to start doing OCD rituals and I started praying to the Pope to make them stop. And I felt like it was my fault and everything. I get similar feelings when the two of them fight. So on this episode, Trisha Paytas was very vulnerable that she has been struggling with infertility and that she really, really wants to be a mom very soon. And they're joking about Trisha and Moses having a baby together. The argument starts when Trisha Paytas says that it is a bigger commitment for her and Moses to buy a house together than it is for them to have a child together. Ethan pushes and calls Trisha crazy, in which then Trisha says that Ethan is crazier. Ethan likes to very much so push buttons on this podcast, which is a huge flaw that he has, but he did this especially to Trisha a lot, especially in moments where you could tell that she was uncomfortable or vulnerable or upset. Calling her crazy probably wasn't the best idea, but anyway, that is when Trisha Paytas decides to say to Ethan, you're crazier, you're just not honest about it. You used to have a pill addiction. This is where Ethan then says that Trisha Paytas weaponizes personal and vulnerable information that he has chosen to open up to her about. Trisha then says that Ethan is a gaslighter and pushed her too much with the jokes that he made and that they're not funny. And when this podcast episode aired, a lot of people said that this may have kind of been a result of a sore subject being brought up on this episode, which was that Ethan and Ela were going on a beach getaway vacation that weekend for their anniversary where they were going to try and conceive for another child. Trisha opening up on the podcast about her struggles and trauma with not being able to conceive, this may have been a sore subject. I'm not saying that's definitive at all, but that is what a lot of fans speculated after this episode had aired. While fighting, Trisha uses this beach getaway against Ethan and calls his life sad and pathetic and that there was a reason why he is with the same person for over 12 years because he could not get anyone else. Trisha then says that she is absolutely done with the show. She said that she was upset because she had no say into how the set was built by the crew, which this argument comes up later on in the show, pushing that she is the reason why the H3 podcast had suddenly started doing a lot better because of Trisha Paytas being on and that the H3 podcast was dying prior to Trisha coming on. Did their views highly increase once Trisha Paytas was on the H3 podcast? Absolutely. I only found out about the H3 podcast because of Frenemies. Trisha also says, I don't care if Moses breaks up with me over this. Ethan says, why would Moses break up with you? Where Trisha then says, I don't like his family. I don't like hanging out with you guys. You guys are awful. No, also additionally says, good luck on the baby making. Ethan then apologizes to Trisha at the end, realizes that he thought that they were joking together, but they were not. Trisha then storms out and leaves for the first time from the frenemies set. This is the part where things kind of get blurry and sad and complicated when it comes to Trisha Paytas and Moses's relationship. Trisha and Moses are both pretty open on the podcast and are joking that Trisha was trying to look at Moses's messages to other girls and even suggests at some points underage girls that were fans. And that because she was trying to get the phone from him that she had hit and punched him, but her defense is that he bruised because he's so frail. Ethan was made aware of this and even brought up on the podcast that that is why the two of them had broken up. Apparently also Trisha had kept her keys away from him 
for like 12 hours. It kind of seemed to be like a joke and made very light of on the podcast, even though that's not a joke, nor is it funny and very serious. So it's clear from the start of this relationship, there is some sort of abuse and toxicity happening within the relationship. These are all very confusing and not clear for us because we're just the viewers and we are not in these people's relationships, just bits and snippets that were shared with us on the air. But I think it's very important to talk about because families were beginning to intertwine because Ela and Ethan and Trisha and Moses were now all suddenly becoming a melting pot together as like a family. Domestic abuse was beginning to be speculated and this was a much bigger deal behind the scenes than any of the viewers had realized even at that point. And they chose to not go public with a lot of the information, which I honestly think was probably for the best. Episode seven, Trisha and Ethan decide to do an episode with Dr. Drew where they do couples therapy. Ethan and Trisha are trying to work through the resentment that they have built towards each other over the short amount of time that they have worked with each other. Unfortunately, this episode had a lot of potential, but Dr. Drew seemed to be interrupting Ethan a lot of the time and siding with Trisha and kind of invalidating Ethan Klein's feelings to a lot of the things that he was talking about. Talking down to Ethan on why he wasn't as good as de-escalating a situation versus Trisha Paytas who had a very bad meltdown at Ethan. Dr. Drew also glazed over when domestic abuse between Moses and Trisha was brought up as it's kind of predictable because she does suffer with BPD. It's like the behavior was dismissed and swept under the rug with the excuse of blackouts but Trisha claimed that she is working on it and is in DBT, which is Dialectical Behavior Therapy, which is very intense therapy, but is for BPD. Over the next few episodes, they're actually pretty low stress and uh, not fighting. They're getting along really well. It seems like Trisha and Ethan are actually becoming pretty good friends. It's actually pretty wholesome to watch in the videos. It almost starts to feel like a brother and sister dynamic, like they really are family, which this was really important. And a lot of people were really happy to see that Trisha had a platonic male friend in her life. And you can tell that Trisha Paytas also really valued this friendship that she was starting to build with Ethan. In this time, they literally do goat yoga. Tampon in. Oh God, <laughs> dude. I have shorts and tights though. Goats might, goats Are they like... attracted to blood like sharks? They're vegan. They also do carpool karaoke together. It's a family affair. It's you guys. This is about Moses. This is the one. It's a family affair. Oh, that's about me? Yeah. Oh, shit. Because it's a family affair. Right. I didn't gonna even sleep But after I explain episode 13, you will be completely shocked that they had filmed 20 more episodes after this. Because it feels like this one should truly be the end of it, which a lot of us thought this definitely is the end of it. So one moment. Trisha and Ethan are completely fine and actually having a very wholesome and good conversation. And the next, Trisha asks if Ela can be on an episode of Frenemies, which Ethan immediately says, no. Trisha says, why? Because it seems like a lot of fans think that we don't like each other or that I don't like Ela or that Ela doesn't like me. Ethan says, she does not want to be talked about. We need to cut this out of the episode. Don't talk about Ela. Trisha immediately gets very upset by this. Don't talk about Ela. We're cutting this part out. She doesn't want to be talked about. Are you f***ing serious? I'm serious. We have to cut this. That's f***ing crazy. Apparently, behind the scenes, Ela and Moses were going through some family problems, family troubles, their brother and sister, as that happens. And Trisha would go through the messages and read between Ela and Moses. Apparently, there was some sort of drama behind the scenes between them two and also involving their parents. And it didn't have anything to do with Trisha, nor was it Trisha's business. But Ela did not appreciate that Trisha would come online and say that Ela doesn't like her, that they're worried that fans think that they don't like each other. Ela did not want to be included in these conversations anymore on air and requested that she was not talked about on air and that her problems with her and Moses be kept private. The pizza curse begins. Whenever pizza is ordered from now on, you will forever get anxiety. Some shit's about to go down. Friendships are about to be ruined. Families are about to collapse. No one order pizza. The pizza is ordered and the pizza arrives. And Trisha decides to say to Ethan, when I have kids, I'm for sure not having a nanny. Ethan asks Trisha what she means by this, which Trisha goes on a whole rant about how she would not leave her kids with a stranger, that they would not be with a nanny, and that they would be with family and that to her, it does not seem responsible that they hired a nanny. This kind of seems out of the blue and that's because it kind of is because 
when she just starts saying, I wouldn't have a nanny, that's for sure. It literally kind of came out of left field. Ethan is very much so in defense of Ella and him having a nanny because they are not able to be with their children during the day when they're both working, when she is in the offices for Teddy Fresh and he is in the studio. So Trisha, by saying that she would not have a nanny, not only looks bad for Ella and Ethan, that they are bad parents, but also their families for not choosing to watch the children full time. Ethan then says, am I supposed to just be watching the one and a half year old all day by myself? As to which then Trisha said, yes, you should be watching the one and a half year old all day to yourself. Which then he said, have you ever spent time with a one and a half year old? Which then Trisha says, that's very offensive. You know I'm infertile. This seems to be a continuing, very sore subject that is brought up. Trisha then calls Ethan and Ella some really horrible names that I cannot repeat or else I will get demonetized. And so she storms out with Moses after the pizza has been delivered. He delivered the pizza this time, okay? That's important to know. They storm out and the episode is over. After filming this podcast episode, Trisha then goes home and makes dozens of videos about Ethan and Ella on her channel, which then she admits later on, was a bit of a meltdown and was embarrassing for her. Episode 14, they're back like they literally never left, okay? Trisha and Ethan are back in the studio and this time Dr. Drew is back and they're taking narcissism tests. For a while, they become actually pretty much like a power duo with the episodes. It gets extremely successful, super high views, less fighting. Ela was even on an episode where they did a newlywed competition because Trisha and Moses got engaged. You may have noticed by this time that Mac DeMarco is on this wall, um, and that's because I need to fill every single picture frame, but also because he was a guest judge on the Frenemies episode where they did a cook-off together. Um, I'll say another staple of the YMCA daycare that I get. <laughs> okay, why is me banging over there, dude? The Parmesan, it has a bit of class. I'm gonna tell you that yeah. right now. Mac DeMarco tried Trisha Paytas butter noodles and Mac DeMarco is friends with Ethan Klein and sometimes they like look very similar in the facial expressions that they make. Something happened to my brain chemistry when this episode aired. I felt like I was hallucinating and I needed to pick out five things I can see, five things I can touch, five things I can smell, five things I can taste, five things I can hear, etc., etc. The second to last episode, episode 38, because there's a whopping 39 with an additional 40, where it's just Ethan Klein on his own. Ela and Ethan announced that they are pregnant. Pregnant? Never thought you'd see me, a person with OCD who's extremely scared of pregnancy and babies, that they would have a picture of a sonogram in their house. Hope my therapist is watching. Look at me, I'm doing exposure therapy. I almost called my therapist a bitch. I did not mean to do that. I meant it in like a loving way. I was like, look at me, bitch. Like it was supposed to be like really endearing, but I. She actually does not watch my videos because that would be very unethical. Anyway, Ela and Ethan are pregnant with their second baby, Bruce Klein. After this episode aired, many people felt like Trisha Paytas was very hostile towards Ethan and not very congratulatory. Ethan Klein herself also struggles with infertility. I do not mean to speculate, but this has just been conversation since Frenemies has started and ended that Trisha Paytas was very triggered and honestly hurt by some of the conversations had whenever Ela and Ethan would talk about having a baby or getting pregnant with another baby. Because Trisha is very open about her struggle with infertility. It's clearly a sensitive topic. Who knows what happened behind closed doors? But nonetheless, it became a stressful time on the podcast. Episode 39, the final episode. Watching most of this episode is actually extremely hard to believe that this was going to be the last episode because the problems literally did not start until like the last 10 minutes. I'm not kidding. The pizza curse. Pizza was ordered. You guys know what's gonna happen. Trisha complained that on the H3 crew, there's not any women that were hired, which at the time was true. For this episode, Ethan then hires Sam, Samantha, who's also dating, Ian, who is a producer on the H3 podcast, hires Sam, which Sam creates an idea for the Frenemies episode that they do a Q&A advice column where fans could submit questions and seek advice from the two of them. The two people where you would want advice from the most, okay? Trisha says that she doesn't like this idea and that it feels like extremely lazy content. Ethan slams back and says that Trisha doesn't do any of the work, that it's him and his crew that are doing all the work. Trisha said that that's not true. Many of the ideas are hers. The vlog ideas are hers. The costume ideas are hers. She brings in different people to work with them, like such as her glam team, which is the person who gets Ethan 
and Trisha into costume. She comes up with topics off the top of her head and she says that Ethan chooses to recycle content that is on H3 and it just feels very repetitive and lazy, which Ethan also agrees to. Trisha also brings up the fact that episode 38, which was the episode previous to this where Ela and Ethan announced their pregnancy, it was so recycled that they decided to title the episode Pregnancy Announcement. When Ela is not even the thumbnail, it is just Trisha and Ethan. When they have already announced that prior week on the regular H3 podcast that Ela is pregnant. Trisha says that she really didn't like this, that they titled this because it made it seem like Trisha was pregnant when in fact she's not. She even says, I'm not pregnant yet, it's the title. She stands her ground and says that she does not like that content is being recycled and it feels lazy from all of them. Ethan insists that she is angry or upset, which Trisha says, I'm not. I'm not angry or upset at all. If I was angry or upset, I would tell you. Ethan says, you don't have to be screaming at the top of your lungs or be throwing a tantrum to be upset or sad or angry. Trisha then admits that she feels like some of the work that is done is not that great and that she gets no say and who gets hired onto the crew. This is kind of a sore subject considering that the person who just got hired was Sam. Trisha says that she should have input on who Ethan hires because he takes budget from the show to pay the crew. He takes Highlight Money, which is a Highlights H3 channel, uses her name in the titles. He says that this channel doesn't earn that much money and it all goes to the crew. And also, Ethan takes 5% of the Frenemy show to pay the crew for the additional work that they do. Ethan says he takes the extra 5% for the production costs and that everything is completely split. Ethan and his crew get a studio downtown for the H3 podcast once COVID starts to get a bit better. But Trisha says that she does not want to be there and does not want to go to downtown. So they accommodated for Trisha and continue to do the podcast from their basement because Trisha really did not want to work in downtown LA. Because of this, they had to put in a bit more money in order to keep the whole studio in their basement while also having enough equipment for the new studio in downtown LA. Trisha claims that Ethan is gaslighting her and making her believe that she's upset when she really isn't. Ethan says, okay, fine, you're not upset. You're in perfect condition right now. Which to then, Trisha says, holy cow, that's crazy. We need to end it right now. Because you can be upset and still show but up. But I'm not upset, quiet. and that's okay. what gaslighting right. is. Because you're okay. saying I'm gaslighting I'm you gaslighting by saying... You. You're not upset. You're perfectly... Oh, wow. You're in a perfect condition right now. Okay. Wow. Holy cow, that's crazy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you... I just don't see what you just did. That's that's really What crazy. did I do? I need, we, I, we have to end it now. Like, really. This is their shortest fight, but the straw that broke the camel's back because Trisha storms out of the podcast studio and the episode ends. Trisha makes a video on her YouTube channel about stepping down from Frenemies where she shows a screenshot where Ethan texts Trisha asking if it's okay that they do a 55-45 split and if that was reasonable so that he can give the crew more money for doing additional work in which she even shows her using an anti-Semitic slur. Might I add that Frenemies merch was due to come out soon. This merch now goes for hundreds on eBay. Like, good fucking luck. That's like an artifact. And they joked about it on the podcast a lot. Like, oh my god, this is gonna be an ancient artifact one day when Frenemies gets cancelled. After Trisha Paytas' videos about this, about her stepping down from Frenemies, her fans came into the crew, which are just normal, regular people who decide to work on a podcast, but live very normal lives and are not considered influencers, who are not used to this, uh, start to get a lot of hate to the point where their social medias had to start going private. This pisses Ethan off a lot because he's very protective about his crew. Trisha Paytas posts a video titled, I'm sorry, where Trisha says that they were sad to leave, but it didn't feel right to stay. Obviously I handled things poorly, she says. I'm so sorry, I'm so, so sorry. I let everyone down. Trisha continues to make videos about the entire situation, where she decides to make a video about all of the things that Ethan has done to her that made her uncomfortable. Uncomfortable jokes, asking invasive questions about sex work, talking about traumatic experiences. Ethan did 100% take it too far with asking some of the questions that he would ask Trisha while on the podcast. Sometimes I think it was pushing too far because he's kind of an interviewer and trying to get the most information out of someone. But at times it was extremely not appropriate. However, Ethan brings up then that Trisha also made Ethan feel uncomfortable with how many times she asked if they could do OnlyFans together, if they could wrestle, if they could shower together just for her OnlyFans. It seems like after this, they decided to take it off of the internet. 
which is what, what should have happened in the first place, honestly. The show is over. The merch is sold out. It's officially done. Everything is done. Frenemies is over. What we do know, with the limited information that we have, is that uh, Trisha and Moses actually had a baby named Malibu Barbie that was born when Queen Elizabeth died. So a lot of people think that Trisha Paytas' baby is the Queen Elizabeth reincarnated. Also, important to note, Moses does not speak to Ela, his sister, nor Ethan. They used to be very close. They were also, I mean, they're literally brother and sister, but they do not speak at all. And they have talked about this on the show before. Ela and Ethan have never met Trisha's baby. Oh, I'm very happy for them. She's beautiful, I agree. Uh, there's nothing more, I mean, listen, we have two kids, a third on the way. There's nothing uh, more sacred and beautiful in the world than, uh, than a baby. So I'm very happy. Uh, Ethan sometimes has spoken out about missing Trisha, missing frenemies. And during the whole Colleen Ballinger situation where Colleen Ballinger had sent Trisha Tavis's nude photos to minors and also humiliated her. Ethan was very kind and said that Trisha does not deserve that. He covered it on his channel and said that what she endured was awful. Although he was very wary to even talk about the whole situation because Trisha and Colleen Ballinger were friends. And Ethan was worried that if he brought up anything negative to say about Colleen Ballinger, that Trisha Paytas would do something really, really bad. What that was, unsure, but that was made very clear on the podcast. Ethan even once said in an episode with Ewa on the H3 podcast that he would rather get in contact with Trisha first than with Moses. Even to this day, Ethan mentions a lot that Trisha Paytas is very anti-Semitic and has said some very anti-Semitic things. So as far as we know, things are pretty private right now, as they probably should be. We don't know exactly what happened, why they're not on speaking terms with Moses. And I wish that there was a happy ending or some sort of answer. And people wish for frenemies to come back, but a lot of people don't want frenemies to come back because of the stress that was put on to Ela and Ethan and the crew. And evidently, Trisha also went through a lot of stress because of this show. Damn. That's it. That's frenemies. I will be sending this video to my mother because during quarantine, when I was literally quarantining with her, I forced her to learn about who these people are. And I know for a fact she has no idea who they are. Whenever I try to bring them up, I'm like, you know Trisha Paytas and frenemies and everything? And she's like, the blonde lady and the man who were always fighting. And I'm like, yes. She's like, they were married? I was like, no, never married. I'm gonna send this video to her so that she can understand what's going on. I will also be sending this to my entire friend group so they can all understand what's going on. And that's all you need to know. That's frenemies. If you like this video, please make sure you leave it a like because this was a lot of hard work. Shout out to CVS for putting this all out for me. Make sure that you subscribe if you want to be nasty, if you're disgusting. Also make sure your bell notifications on so you know every single time I post or else you are gross. If you want to follow me on my Instagram, Twitter, Depop, Spotify, it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, it's at Nick so Nasty. I'm gonna go now. I'm literally having a birthday party inside my house tonight and I will be bringing everyone to take photos with this fall. Okay, bye. <laughs> Oh,